Hi everyone, this is Wembo TV. Today I would like to take you guys to one of my favorite countries, Iraq. Iraq, a country located in Western Asia, it is the origin of one of the most ancient civilizations. It is the homeland of Mesopotamia. The two rivers, Tigris and Euphrates, flow on this rich land, contributing to the prosperity in the past. This is a country full of resources, but it is known for its unstable domestic situation all over the world. So, before departing to Iraq, I decided to ask a few of my friends about what they know about Iraq. What do you think about Iraq? A country in the Middle East, war, refugee, and battlefield. I know there was a bit of a political conflict and a bit yeah I have a slight imagination that it's a bit not safe place necessarily but I can't say precisely as well so what do you think about Iraq I just think there's a it's just another country I really don't have anything to say because I'm not sure what it is <laughs> what it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> What do you think about Iraq? Um, it is a place might have war and it is dangerous to travel, I think. So it seems most of my friends, they have a pretty negative idea towards Iraq. And to be honest, I have no idea about how the country is going to be and how my journey is going to be. But I'm really, really super looking forward to traveling to Iraq. And let's see what I'm going to experience there and what about my Iraq. Now I'm going to the clinic to do my PCR for my trip to Iraq. You know, since the 1st of April, travelers will no longer present negative PCR when entering Iraq. But because you know, I'm arriving on the 31st of March, so unfortunately I still need the negative PCR result. Thank you. Thank you. Well, now I've done my PCR and I will need to wait for the result for around 12 to 24 hours. It was pretty interesting because the staff asked where I'm traveling to and I said Iraq. And then she was kind of surprised at me, her face, you know, suddenly changed. And I think well, she wanted to be polite to me, so after a few seconds, she asked me whether the weather in Iraq is going to be hot or oh, whatever. Well, it's just, you know, interesting. So, since there's no direct flight from London to Baghdad, I have to transfer in Milan first. And then from Italy, I have to fly to Istanbul. And then from Istanbul, I will fly to Back down. Hi. Our 
after two hours from the arriving in Milan. Now I'm in the central part of the city, central part of Milano and heading to the most beautiful building here which is called Bosco Verticale See there Milan is super different from other part of Italy and it's my fourth time to visit Italy and well it's super fashionable and modern here um, I have to say Milan gave me a pretty super different impression of Italy Duomo is super cool and pretty Now it's almost 3.30 and I have to go back to the train station to get my luggage and it's really time for me to leave the city and I really really love here well anyway see you soon bye Hi, I'm going to Iraq Baghdad. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm at the Istanbul airport and I was quite surprised because when I went to the check-in counter they didn't ask me for anything and the process was super easy it's 11 p.m now and i'm pretty sleepy but you know at the same time also very excited at the same time because i will soon be baghdad but i still remember that last year in september when i flew from dubai to london my airplane passed baghdad from the sky and i was wondering when i would be able to visit iraq in the future well you know life is just super unexpected i have never thought about visiting Europe this soon This is such an incredible feeling. I have arrived in Baghdad right now and still can't believe it. Getting into Iraq had never been easy, but since the year of 2021, which is last year, Iraqi government started to issue several country citizens arrival visa. So when I arrived at the Baghdad International Airport, I received my arrival visa by paying $77. And then I entered my 82nd country in my life, Iraq. And now I'm in 
now I've already got my arrival visa and I just entered the country. Everyone was super nice to me, like the officers and stuff there, like everyone was just very really kind to me. The current Iraq is the center of the ancient Mesopotamian civilization. Speaking of Mesopotamia, Babylon city cannot be neglected. There are too many fascinating myths about it. To discover the lost Babylon city, I took a shared taxi from Baghdad to Musain and I met my new local friends there to explore ancient Babylon together. We were discovering the mysterious tower of Babylon and the ancient Babylon city together there. Well, you can see the original part of the architecture was built by mud. All stories about Babylon are the truth, but there are still many parts are underdiscovered today. Many scholars have been imagining the shape and the design of the Tower of Babel. And you can see there are so many different versions. Also, the Hawaiian Gardens of Babylon is also another super mysterious thing. You can see lion is the symbol of Babylon and under this sculpture, under the feet of the lion, there's a woman. I still clearly remember that whenever local Iraqi people talk about Babylon city, they always mention the Ishtar gate. When I told them that I visited the real one in Germany, many of them were super curious about it and asked me to describe it. I'm pretty sure that everyone on this piece of land is proud of their history. Not far from the ancient Babylon city, there's a gorgeous building that always attracted my attention. This is the Saddam Hussein's house. Now, the whole building is abandoned. It is said that he built this house when the economy in Iraq was really terrible, and he printed money in order to build this. The building is just super amazing. It looks really, really gorgeous. You can see Saddam Hussein's name on the building. This is his bathroom. Well, just imagine in the morning when you get up and you overlook the whole ancient Babylon city. Well, that's, that is so extravagant.
Baghdad is the current capital city of Iraq. It was founded in the 8th century, which means that it is one of the oldest capital cities in the world. Here, it was also the center of the Islamic world during the Islamic Golden Age in the 9th to 10th centuries. Since then, Baghdad became one of the largest cities in the world. Even today, following Cairo, Baghdad is the second largest city in the Arabic world with more than 7 million populations in the city. Since the beginning of the 1970s, Baghdad experienced temporary prosperity due to the sudden increased price of oil. However, things started to change after the 1980s. Since then, the Iran-Iraqi war started. It was a tough time for the city as numerous citizens were killed by rockets and missiles, and a large amount of money was flowing to the army and military. Also, the Gulf War between Kuwait and Iraq in 1990 also damaged the Iraqi economy to a serious extent because numerous infrastructures were destroyed. After half a year, the war finally finished in February 1991. However, that was the beginning of the disaster. In 2003, America started to invade Iraq under the name of Disarming Iraq with weapons of mass destruction, ending Saddam Hussein's regime, and also freeing the Iraqi people. So Baghdad was heavily bombed by the US military during that period of time. Nowadays, Baghdad is full of people every day, and it is a city full of energy all the time, but... I can see even today, you can still see a lot of traces of war in Baghdad, like this building was bombed by the US soldier in the past. So like here, during the war, right in front of this coffee shop, there was a car bombed, and many people died in the coffee shop. Like the owner of the coffee shop, like four of his uh, sons and grandson died. Explosion. Yeah. This clock tower of the mosque was also bombed during the war, and it was just repaired now. In this city, Fallujah, you can see a lot of people they are having fun in the amusement park right now. But during the war, this area was heavily attacked by the US soldiers. And even today, you can still see a lot of bullet marks from the war buildings. In 2003, a piece of land of around 10 square kilometers called Green Zone was established by the Coalition Provisional Authority which was a transitional Iraqi government led by the US and other multinational forces. This is the area where the central government of Iraq has currently located, as well as the location for many western embassies such as the US. Even today, this area is highly restricted to visit. Well, the famous Victory Arc is in this green zone, but unfortunately, it's not allowed to visit this area on foot. So, so yeah, I could only visit here in a car. So thanks to my host, because he decided to take me to visit there by driving. Without him, I can't make this journey successful.